Welcome to our lecture online. Here's our first example of how to work with that equation that deals with belt friction. What we have here is we have a rope that's wrapped around the post. It's wrapped around twice. The rope begins to make contact right here with the post, goes all the way around once, goes all around again a second time, and then of course after this it no longer makes contact with the post. So it's exactly twice around the post. And there's a force of 1000 newtons pulling on this side of the rope. The question is how much force is required over here to hold the rope from slipping so that the rope is stationary. We're going to calculate it three times with three different coefficients of static frictions. 0 0.2, 0 0.4, and 0 0.8. Notice that each time we double the coefficient of friction from before to see what effect it will have on the amount of tension required or force required to keep the rope from slipping. So what we can say here is that the equation we found on the previous video, T2 divided by T1 is equal to E raised to the coefficient of static friction times the angle of contact. So in this case, the angle of contact would be two complete rotations that would be twice two pi or a total angle of four pi radians of contact. Now we're looking for T1. So this equation can now be solved for T1. We say that T1 is equal to T2 divided by e to the mu sub s times beta. And we're going to calculate that for three of these coefficient of frictions. So we're going to use the first one where mu sub s is equal to 0 0.2. And that means that T1 will be equal to 1000 newtons divided by e to the 0 0.2 times 4 pi. Two complete revolutions is 2 pi radians, and yes, we do have to use radians for the angle. And that with the calculator, we get the following, 0.2 times 4 times pi, raise that to as an exponent, and times 1000 equals, and that gives us exactly 81 newtons, so it requires T1 equals 81 newtons, the force required to keep this rope from slipping, which is kind of nice. You see here that when you apply a force of 1,000 newton here, you only need 81 newtons to keep that rope from slipping. And that is if the coefficient of friction is 0.2. What happens if the coefficient of friction is 0.4? How does that change things? And initially you might think, well, if it's double the coefficient of friction, you expect maybe half the tension, but that's not the case. This is kind of a unique situation. It's not a linear function, and so let's see what that happens. We get mu sub s now equal to 0 0.4. So we get T1 is equal to 1000 newtons divided by e to the 0 0.4 times 4 pi. And let's see what happens now. So we have 0.4 times 4 times pi e to the x inverse times 1,000 equals. So it's only 6.56 newtons. T1 is equal to 6.56 newtons. Notice, by doubling the coefficient of friction, we now require less than one-tenth the tension to keep the rope from slipping. Now let's go one more. Let's say the coefficient of friction is 0.8. That's not a usual case, but just to see how this works. Let's try mu sub s equals 0 0.8. That gives us T1 is equal to 1000 newtons divided by e to the 0 0.8 times 4 pi. And let's see what that now becomes. So we get 0.8 times 4 times pi as an exponent. Take the inverse of that, times 1,000. And now it takes just a small fraction of a newton, 0 0.043 newtons. That's almost hard to believe. And that's indeed the case. It turns out that when you wrap strings or ropes or cables or anything around the post a number of times, the amount of tension you need on the other side to keep the rope from slipping is actually quite small and becomes very small as the coefficient of static friction increases. So now in the next example, we're going to do something similar, but now we're going to change the number of times we wrap the rope around the post to see how that affects how much tension you need to keep the rope from slipping. And that's how it's done. 